Hello friends today we will discuss about the five different generations of computer so let's start Generation in computer talk is a step in technology it provides a framework for the growth of computer industry originally the term generation was used to differentiate between hardware technologies but it has now been extended to include both hardware and software that together make up a computer system the computer was developed in five different phases known as generations of computer each phase is characterized by type of switching circuits it uses note that the timeline specified for each generation is tentative and not definite The generations are actually based on evolving chip technology rather than any particular time frame. The first generation computers within vacuum tubes, the second generation computers within transistors, the third generation computers within integrated circuits, the fourth generation computers within microprocessor chips. The fifth generation computers unveiled smart devices capable of artificial intelligence. First generation of computers 1940s to 1950s vacuum tubes and plug boards first generation computers were actually the first general purpose and true digital computers they came in time to replace the electromechanical systems which were way too slow for assigned tasks a case in point was the need by the usa army to have machines capable of computing artillery firing tables fast enough existing ones to call most two days When completed the new machines computed the stable data in seconds fortunately or unfortunately they became available only after the end of world war 2 in 1946 the first computer generations used vacuum tubes for amplification and switching purposes the tubes were made of sealed glass containers the size of light bulbs the sealed glass allowed current to flow wirelessly from the filaments to metal plates and because there were no moving parts in the system the flow amplified current to enable the computer to manipulate assigned tasks vacuum tubes also started and ended the circuitry by switching on and off when turned on or off besides boasting of thousands of resistors and capacitors these computers would use anything up to an over 17000 vacuum tubes which meant computer installations covered entire rooms Input and output was done using punch cards, magnetic drums, typewriters and punch card readers. Initially, technicians manually perforated the cards with holes. This was later done using computers. Interfacing with first gen systems was done using plug boards and machine language. The technicians wired up electrical circuits by connecting numerous cables to plug boards. These machines were intended for low level operations and thus programming was done using only binary digits 0 and 1. The systems could solve only one problem at a time. Assembly language and operating system software were non-existent. One of the most outstanding computers in this era was the ENIAC Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, which was designed and built by engineers John W. Mochley and J. Presper Eckert of the University of Pennsylvania. Its assembly was done by a team of 50 men. characteristics of first generation computers they used vacuum tubes for circuitry electron emitting metal in vacuum tubes burned out easily used magnetic drums for memory were huge slow expensive and many times undependable were expensive to operate were power hungry generated a lot of heat which would make them malfunction solved one problem at a time used input based on punched cards had their outputs displayed in printouts used magnetic tapes used machine language had limited primary memory were programming only in machine language second generation of computers 1952-1960 transistors and batch filing these were computers which used transistors instead of vacuum tubes they were better than their predecessors in many ways because of apparent small size speed and cheaper cost transistors are more or less the building blocks of any microchip out there and also more reliable energy efficient and capable of conducting electricity faster and better Just like vacuum tubes, transistors are switches or electronic gates used to amplify or control current or switch electric signals on and off. They are called semiconductors because they contain elements which lie between conductors and insulators. Transistor semiconductors were invented at Bell Laboratories in 1947 by scientists William Shockley, John Bardeen and Walter Brattain, but did not see the day of light until mid-1950.
Characteristics of second-gen computers They, used transistors, faster and more reliable than first-generation systems, were slightly smaller, cheaper, faster, generated heat though a little less, still relied on punch cards and printouts for input, output, allowed assembly and high-level languages, stored data in magnetic media, were still costly, needed air conditioning, introduced assembly language and operating system software. Third generation of computers, 1962-1970, integrated circuits and multi-programming. Third generation computers used the integrated circuit IC microchip instead of transistors. The semiconductor IC packed a huge number of transistors, capacitors, diodes and rectifiers onto a single germanium or silicon. These were then printed on separate parts of a printed circuit board. The implementation of these computers was also in line with Moore's law, 1965, which observed that transistor size was shrinking so fast that double the number would fit into new microchips every two years for 10 years to come. He readjusted this exponential growth after 10 years, to every five years. In 1975, the IC sought to solve the cumbersome procedures that went into designing the transistor circuitry. The manual interconnection of capacitors, diodes, and rectifiers in transistors was time-consuming and not completely reliable. The IC circuitry aside, the interaction with computers improved, instead of punched cards, printouts, keyboards and better input peripherals were used to input data which were displayed for output through visual display units. Computers now used operating system software to manage computer hardware and resources, this allowed systems to run different applications at a time. This was because of centralized applications that monitored memory distribution, computers became accessible to the mass audience because of size and fair costing. Fourth generation of computers, 1970 to present, the microprocessor, OS and GI. The birth of the microprocessor was at the same time the birth of the microcomputer. It was also in line to fulfill Moore's law which predicted exponential growth in transistor and microchips starting in 1965. This generation is instrumental in ushering in diverse devices. The second generation computers which began in 1971 are those in use today. Intel, through its engineers Ted Hoff, Federico Fagan and Stan Mazer in November. November 1971, introduced the world's first single-chip microprocessor, the Intel 4004, it boasted of 2,300 transistors and measured 1/8 by 1/16. What in the first generation filled an entire room could now fit it in the palm of the hand, on its own, new microchip was as powerful as the ENIAC computer from 1946, it also merged most of the functions that charged a computer-like central processing unit, memory, input and output controls, challenged by the Xerox Alto, serious staff began in 1974 when Intel came up with a general-purpose 8-bit microprocessor it named 8808, it sought for, and asked Gary Kildall, a consultant, to write an operating system for its new baby, this led to the disk-based operating system software known as Control Program for Microcomputers, CPM. In 1981, International Business Machine introduced its first computer for the home which ran the 4004 processor. It was known as IBM PC, with PC standing for personal computer. They partnered with Bill Gates who bought disk operating system from Seattle Computer Product and had it distributed with IBM's new computer. Apple under Steve Jobs changed the software game when it released the Apple Macintosh computer with an improved key. Graphical user interface in 1984, following the success of Apple's key, Microsoft 2 integrated a shell version of Windows in the DOS version of 1985. Windows was used like this for the next 10 years until it was reinvented as Windows 95. This was a true operating system software complete with all the right utilities. Characteristics of fourth-gen computers They, used CPUs which contained thousands of transistors, were much smaller and fitted on a desktops, laps and palms, used a mouse, were used in networks, were cheap, had key, were very fast, register over 19 billion transistors in high-end microprocessors. Fifth generation of computers, 1990 t till date, computers uses ULSI, ultra-large-scale integration, technology, resulting in the production of microprocessor chips having 10 million electronic components, this generation is based on parallel processing hardware and AI, artificial intelligence, software, AI is an emerging branch in computer science, which interprets the means and method of making computers think like human beings, all the high-level languages like C and C, Java, NetH, are used in this generation. 
while software became commonplace and corporations began charging money for it, a new movement of programmers started Linux in 1991, led by Linux Tovels. They pioneered a free open source operating system project called Linux. Besides Linux, other open source operating systems and free software were distributed to cater for office, networking, and home computers. Examples of open source and free software Ubuntu OS, Mozilla Firefox, Browser Open Office, MySQL VLC Media Player. Thank you for watching this, hope you like it, if you have any suggestion related this feel free to comment us.